he, the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you, where else can we enter? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life and for the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as Christ's body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other after all. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry. But don't use your anger to fuel as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you used to make ends? Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break God's heart. God's Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for God's self. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. Wake up from your sleep. Watch what God does and then do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with God and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Thank you.
Dear siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer and Savior, and the Holy Spirit that dwells within. Amen. As many of you know, we have a baby granddaughter, and she's just past eight months old, and just learning how to crawl. She does a pretty good otter kind of swim on the floor, but she's not on her hands and knees yet. But when the kid gets that close to being mobile, everybody's job is to child-proof the house. So we've been putting rubber bands around cabinet handles to tie them together. And we've got our dowels and yardsticks ready to slide down drawer handles. And you know, we've, we've done this before because we had our own kids. But still, my hypothesis is between the age of about eight months and five years of old, it is a miracle that children don't self-destruct. <laughs> because they're so good at getting into dangerous things. So, the other night we were over at their house helping them childproof their house. They live in Monmouth. And they, everybody else was upstairs and I was downstairs with baby Charlotte. And she's moving around their living room and they had a brand new rug rolled up and still in its plastic. I thought, well, that's pretty harmless. And she tore off a piece of plastic. And you know where babies go with plastic or anything that ends up in their hand. So she's headed with the plastic toward her mouth. And honest to God, this is the first time I made this baby cry. But I intervened and I took the plastic out of her hand. I said, no, that's not good. We can't eat plastic. And, like she's going to understand me. What she saw was that I grabbed something out of her hand that might have had the potential to be good tasting. <laughs> That's how babies learn the world. We taste it to see if it's any good. Our two lessons this morning have that same kind of cautionary tale. Kind of like you are what you eat. So in Ephesians, we are being warned. We're told first how much God loves us. Loves us. Which is just insane. You know, when someone who is considered more important than you, although we are created equal, right? Pays any attention to you. It's an honor. I got a phone call from Randall Faust, retired professor emeriti at Western University. He was chair of the uh, uh, International Horn Society numerous times before he retired. And he calls and he says, I'd like to play at your church. And I was floored. Right? He's been threatening this for a while. Because he's heard concerts here and he knows the space. And I'm like, wow, that would be a tremendous honor. And he said, I'd like you to accompany me on the organ. <laughs> And uh, first of all, the fact that he wants to play here is such a big deal to me because he's like been, I mean, if musicians who are Christians could have idols, he would be one of mine. But now we have to practice. Ephesians is telling 
telling us how to practice. Because God, who is all in all, loves us so much and wants to spend time with us. Crazy, huh? So Paul says things like, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Anger, left unchecked, produces things that aren't good. You are what you eat. You can be angry. There's, there are times when anger is justified. But you deal with it. Deal with it in person. And forgive. Be merciful. Or the food that you're eating, that anger that you're eating, will eat your insides up. Paul writes, if you lie about whatever, you're starting to lie to yourself. And those lies are like eating bad food, and they will eat you up. If you steal, Well, no more, he writes. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Don't steal. And I know I've taught enough confirmation that people want to get loopholes on that one. But corporate theft is also stealing. I remember when one of the nuns on a bus came to our seminary and she taught us about third world labor. And that the baseballs that were being sold, how much does a baseball sell for anymore? Anybody know? Steve's gone. Jerry, any idea? Uh, okay, okay. The person who sews up the laces on that gets just a couple pennies. One or two. Because we can get the cheap labor. Bananas. Don't follow the life cycle of a banana if you want to feel good about eating bananas. My daughter has stopped eating cashews because when we were last in El Salvador, we were fed the cashew fruit. Did you know they come from fruit and they don't just grow on a tree? They're as big as an apple, and they're juicy and fleshy, and most of that gets thrown away, so we can have a little cashew. He says, don't grieve God. Don't break God's heart. How would we break God's heart? By eating of, by nourishing ourselves with the things of the world. Don't break God's heart. Think about how, how intimate that is. How much power God gives us that our actions might hurt God. Well, of course, actions like this did crucify Jesus. 31 and 32 make a clean break with all, and Eugene Peterson uses these words, cutting, backbiting, <coughs> profane talk. Poison. Cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Someone recently used a definition that I will keep in mind. Um, definition of gossip. 
is when you're talking about someone and they're not in the room with you. That causes us to take a moment and come back to why am I talking about this person? So we're not going to eat of those fruits. As I would say to a small child, spit it out. But in John chapter 6, Jesus gives us the alternative. Jesus, also from the message, the same gospel lesson that we read today, in, chapter, in verse 43, Jesus says, Don't bicker amongst yourselves over me. You're not in charge here. The Father who sent me is in charge, and he draws people to me. Then I do my work, putting people together, setting them on their feet. And they are being personally taught by God. Because Jesus is God incarnate. You see, Lutherans have this saying that Scripture interprets Scripture. Which is to say, if you find something in the Bible that you're reading and it doesn't make sense, what does the rest of Scripture have to say about that context? And more importantly, what does Jesus have to say about that context? Jesus says, your ancestors, talking to the Jewish people who were arguing with him, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. And they couldn't see past that. And the people who were fed at the feeding of 5,000, which is what this chapter's about, couldn't see past, wow, Jesus made sure we got fed. Let's hang around him. He might give us free lunch every day. But Jesus said no. You see, God fed the Israelites in the wilderness every single day with manna. And that first generation never got into the promised land because all they could do was grumble. Which is what Ephesians is warning us against. Every single person that Jesus performed a miracle on, even Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead, every single person that Jesus performed a miracle on died. But Jesus is promising something bigger eternal and abundant life now and. Now and. It's not just about after we die, but now and. Peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, generosity, self-control, those fruits of the Spirit. That's when we know what we've been eating, is we're bearing those fruits. Animosity cannot bear those fruits. War cannot bear those fruits. And so here's what I've been thinking. symbolically spit out all the bad fruits we've been eating that we've been trying to nourish ourselves with. Is my heart full of something other than love and praise for God and love for my neighbor? Can I spit it out and let it go? Or do I want it to continue to eat me from the inside out? I'm not about decision theology, but what?
one food will give us life, and the other will suck it out of us. Out, out of us. So in the center um, aisle by your pews, there's just little scrap papers like this. They might have something on the back side already. And write down something that you want to spit out. Nobody's ever going to read this. But when we come to communion this morning, we're going to take those words, we're going to crumple them up, and we're going to throw them in the trash at the foot of the cross. Everybody clear? Need, need more instruction? What do you dearly want to spit out that's not doing you any good anymore? Symbolically, write it down. Spit it out. And ask God to fill you with something better. Fill you with the bread of life. So that when you come to communion, you are wholeheartedly welcoming Jesus and the ways of Jesus. So you'll have a little time between now and then if you're having trouble thinking. And if you need more papers, they're at the ends of every pew. And there's a few pews that are not being used, so I know there's lots of paper out there. And I want to thank Bob Clark and Rose Chatterton for tidying up our pew pencils, making sure they're all sharp and uh, everything is in there neat, neat and tidy. And so now I just ask God's blessings on you that you might spit out the poison. Or that maybe you have someone who loves you enough to keep you from eating it. drink in Jesus that the peace of God that passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds forever Amen
believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the Spirit of Wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the Church, O God. By your Spirit, root your Church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forests and wilderness areas. Merciful God, guide our leaders and nations with the spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA, World Hunger, and our local food pantries, especially our food pantry here at First Lutheran Church. We pray and work for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Merciful God. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints, of, of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace.
table with your very, very self and call us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Probably a special prayer is in order for Pastor, um, who's going to be at the organ this afternoon with with uh, Randall Faust on the French horn. And uh, it's been a while since you played organ, isn't it? We'll see what happens. <coughs> That's great. Um, and the pet blessing, annual pet blessing, is at four o'clock this afternoon. Um, Council meets on Tuesday, 
So if you have anything that needs to be attended to for counsel, let Phil Chatterton know. Amber and I leave this afternoon, or this morning, right after church for Michigan. We're going to spend a few days with the kids in Bay City, Michigan. So we're looking forward to that. Blessings on your travels. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Pastor? Uh, there is an insert in your bulletin, and that's about a community health survey. Connie, do you have a few words to say about that? No, I think everybody should put um, OSF Healthcare has to do that every three years with government regulations. So we just should be able to plan our um, programs in the community and address some of our needs. I would really like everybody's voice. And there's also paper copies out there in the, in the hospitality hall if anybody would want a paper copy. Yes, you can fill that out, my paper. Or you can yes, scan the QR code that is in your bulletin. Yes. And uh, let's help Connie out and get some numbers for her. Yeah, and we need to buy the, the 31st of August, please. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your, um, your work in the community. <coughs> please rise for the benediction. Oh, is there another? Bob Fernandez's birthday. Oh, it is, was yesterday. Yes. Bob Fernandez's birthday. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to start happy birthday because it would start below the <laughs> The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be